Okay. Uh, doing five seven number twenty one. Starts out like so. All right. Um, so we just turn back to that first page of this section uh, to Theorem Five Point One Seven and look for something that looks similar and uh, if we look let's see well number one where the uh, antiderivative involves the arc sign you see that it involves uh, a squared and I get this little pointer here um, in that number one there's the the number first and the function next so that's what we're going to use. Um, but we do need to uh, mess around with it a little bit with u substitution. Um, so you can you can grab a, your mouse and write on the screen. Um, so why don't you pick what you would be? <laughs> Very good. Yeah, that's right. Because uh, you would take 3x and square it. That would be u squared. If you squared 3x, that would be 9x squared. Um, so I think I'm going to have this out. I, I think it looks kind of weird and floaty on your end, but uh, at least it's something. So then du is 3dx. But we don't want to replace 3dx, we just want to replace 1dx. So we divide by 3 on both sides. Okay, so now we have... I'm going to leave the limits out of integration out because now we're replacing x with u. Um, and we'll do the 1 third out here. 1 third du the square root of 1 minus u squared, because if we were to square this 3x here, we would get 9x squared, so we know that's right. And then we follow the pattern there of uh, a number 1, uh, du over the square root of a squared minus u squared is the arc sine of u over a u is 3x and a is just 1. So we don't need to worry about writing over a, we can just write of u. Of course this should have a one-third out in front. And that's it. Uh, the only other thing left is to take it from 0 to 1 -sixth. So third times the arc sine of 3 times 1 sixth uh, minus 1 third times the arc sine of what, 3 times 0, so 0. Um, and 3 times 1 sixth is 1 half one third times well we already do see this is the arc sine of zero and um, you, know, you you, know, you fill this in with where you find the sine of zero hey Logan Well, it's true that you'll find a sine of zero at pi, but remember when we were talking about the arc sine, uh, if we were looking at um, the unit circle, let's grab another color. 
if we were looking at the unit circle, when we're using arc sine, we're going to be looking on the right side between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. And pi is over here. And so we don't want to use that. So what angle between 0 and pi over 2 is going to have uh, a sine of 0? Let me see if I can grab this and delete it. Okay, well, pi over 2 is going to... Remember that, um, like, we're looking at a... Oh, that's bad. This is, like, the x-axis and the y-axis, and the sine is the vertical component. So at pi over 2, actually, the sine would be 1. And you were right first to say that uh, the angle pi has a, a sine of 0, because its vertical component is 0. The vertical component at pi over 2 is 1. So where between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. OK, it is 2 pi is over there. But if you think about it, 2 pi is actually much bigger than pi over 2. It's not between the values of negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So it is, pi over 2 is right where I'm talking about, but we would actually use 0. OK. Hey, Logan, do you have a, oh, sorry. Logan, do you, can you hear us? And Well, I guess just me. Cool. Do you have a microphone? So do you have a microphone, Logan? So if you if you have it and you want to use it, you could plug it in, uh, and at the top right of your screen there should be a little microphone you can click on and start your transmission. Um, so we're going to take out this pi over 2, and uh, use pi, or zero, I meant zero. Okay. Uh, oh. And, uh, alright, so we're looking here at the arc sine of one half, where will we find a sine of one half? I guess we should throw a one third times the arc sine of one half, which would be some angle between, and I'm scrolling down a little bit, you guys are free to scroll uh, on your own screens. Um, yeah, this is 21. <laughs> it's okay. We won't judge you. So let's come back to uh, to here and decide where we'll find a sine of one half. Which angle has a sine of one half? Sure, Logan's there somewhere. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, good. Pi over 6. Pi over 6. Uh, minus 1 third times 0 is just 0. And so our answer will be pi over 18. Any questions on that one? <laughs> okay. Good. Um, all right. Well, Logan, do you have one? That was Justin's question. Whoa, Justin just got in there with 42. Alright, well, I guess we'll do 42. Um, so, oh, this is strange. Hold on. I'm gonna make this screen a little bigger real quick. So number 42, 5.7 I would assume. So we've got to get this to be in the form of, yes, that's the drone, is the, or maybe it's just me, my natural charisma. Um, so we've got to get this to fit uh, the form, or one of the forms of uh, 1, 2, or 3 on page 380. completing the square. Do you guys remember completing the square from class? Okay, so um, maybe let's try messing around with this a little bit. And first off, I'm going to just, it's easier for me to look at if I factor out a negative because I see this x to the fourth is going to have a negative in front of it. And so rather than have that go on, I'm going to uh, factor that negative out. So factor the negative out, so this will be negative 9, negative 8x squared, and a positive x to the fourth. And so when I bring it down here, it'll be that negative. <coughs> uh, x to the fourth. 8x squared minus 9. I'm going to switch back to blue here. Okay. Uh, so if we're going to complete this square, then uh, I'll have Logan jump in here and decide what we should be adding here um, in order for you know this plus whatever this is to factor as a perfect square.
Well, it will be positive because think of it this way. And I'm scrolling down, so you may want to scroll down so you can see what I'm doing. Um, the idea here is that this will, you know, with the addition of whatever this is, uh, is going to factor into a perfect square. So we're going to have x, and it's, they're going to add up to a negative, so they're both going to be negative. So we're going to multiply these two identical binomials together. Uh, the same thing here as here, and when you multiply these two negatives together, it's always going to be a positive. subtract from the 9 we can and we will you know we'll kind of need to uh, once we figure out what that thing is like we could erase this parentheses and make room for whatever that's going to be we still have to figure out what this should be yeah so if this is a 16, um, then we should also, when we add 16 here, we can't just add it out of the blue. We've got to balance it out, so we'll do minus 16. Okay. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, that's kind of what we're doing, Justin, is making it better for completing the square. Um, so here, you would get a 4 and a 4. And then minus 9 and minus 16 would be negative 25. Right? And uh, let's see. Oh, we should have this under a square root instead of not. Um, so let's just move this way. Alright, so this will now be, since this negative is outside of the whole thing, so be negative x minus 4 squared, uh, this should have a, another parentheses around it, and a negative outside. distribute that negative. And I'm going to get rid of this here. Isn't isn't what x squared, right? Right here this x is this x squared? No, we're just writing. Um, see, I'm I'm saying this quantity is squared because we have x minus four times x minus four, so we have two factors of x minus four. When you multiply them together, that's x minus four squared. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so, I'm just going to clear some of this out. Alright. Um, so now, what I'm going to do is... Okay. Just rewrite this. And distribute that negative that I haven't distributed yet. Uh, so the negative distributed to the negative 25 would be a positive 25. And now we'll get minus x minus 4 squared. Okay? So just distributed that negative. And so now, we're going to take a look. Uh, see, this is x. So we, should have, we should have had a dx out here the whole time. Uh, oh, look.
Logan. Oh man, you're right. You've been right the whole time. Uh, it's not x. It is x squared. Now I see what you're pointing back to. Back to this x of the fourth. <laughs> Uh, so it is x squared, and now that's that's really good news because um, we need this to be uh, at least really close to the derivative of what we see inside the parentheses being squared. If you look on page uh, 380, then uh, it looks like number one, the arc sine. It's got a, a number that's squared, that's 5 squared, and then a function that's squared. And then on top, it's got to have the derivative of the thing that's being squared. Um, so if we let, let me pick a different color so it stands out. If we try to do this uh, integral using u substitution, um, Justin, to pick what u would be. Right, except for uh, it does need to be squared, like Logan pointed out. Our u is usually, uh, if we're going to use these um, inverse trig functions, it's just going to come right from here. It's If you can write it as a function squared, it just comes right out of those parentheses. And that's where your u comes from. And so du would be 2x dx which is almost what we have up here. We have x dx. Um, so, there you go. Exactly. <laughs> That's some weird notation. But yes, so du over 2 would be dx. Uh, I only say that because it's also equaling 2x dx up here. So du over 2 equals dx, and that's exactly what we needed to do. So we'll come back over here, and since this is du over 2, as we have been doing for a long time, pull out that constant of 1 half, and then we've got, oh, I shouldn't have started to write that. Um, up here we have du. Once I grab my pen. Over the square root of, it might help us to write it down in exactly the same form, 5 squared minus u squared. So then this would be, now looking at uh, number 1 on page 380, uh, we would follow that pattern. So we got our constant times the derivative, which is arc sine of u, which is x squared minus 4 over a, which is 5, plus c. Look good? Maybe Logan can actually get to pick one this time without Justin button in. you look over on the right, I don't know if what I'm pointing at on your screen, but on mine there's a, an arrow and a, and a pencil and text, and if you select the, there you go, 
if you pick the arrow up at the top of your tools on the right side not up there not up there <laughs> on the right side maybe okay maybe you have to be did you have anything new pop up on your right side here Nothing on the right side, huh? Hmm. Well, do do you have? I mean, you you can obviously write. Do you have an arrow tool above your pencil tool? If you have a if you have an arrow and you click on your arrow as opposed to your pencil, then you can just drag a big box around stuff and then delete it with the delete key. Ah. All right. So I'm going to jump back here to page 1. If that will let me do that. Okay. And we'll we'll work here. On 63. Alright, so finding the area under the curve, which we should recognize as an integration problem. Alright. Y equals 1 over x squared. Alright, and so we should be able to recognize that we need to take the integral of this thing. Somebody mark what the limits of integration should be. I'm going to give Logan the power as well to erase. Uh, yes, except, again, they should be here and here, and it goes in the other order. Logan's emphatic that they be on the inside. Oh my goodness. It's hard because if you touch anything with that rectangle, uh, it, it collects it and wants to group it together. But I'll fix it. Times last five. What's going on? Plus five. Okay. Um, good. Now, uh, we again, we go back to page 380, looking at those patterns, trying to find one that this looks like. And which one does it look like? Two, yes, two, where there's no square root and there's just a number squared plus a function squared. Okay. Um, so what's it looks like? is going to happen here in order for us to make it look like that. Um, good, yeah. Well, I think good. I think we're thinking on the right terms, or the same terms. Um, let's see, we're going to rewrite this. squared minus 2x. So what would go next in order for it to be a perfect square? Let's take a look. Let's scroll down. 
think about what we're trying to accomplish. We're trying to uh, mess with this a little bit so that this will happen. X, uh, oh shoot, I should have not done that. Uh, so it'll be X minus something times X minus the same thing again and then you know probably there'll be the leftovers of this 5 over here whatever that is but we ha we're going to have two identical things that are going to multiply together and what we know about them right now is that when we FOIL this um, this number times this X plus this number times this X will add together to make negative 2X now I don't think they're going to multiply together to make 4, and that's where this number comes from. cleared the way. What do you think, Logan? thing here is, um, and let, let's try and come back up to here so that we the, the whole 5 thing can make a little more sense, but um, these two things need to be identical. Um, and even at that, if we were to multiply these out, you get x squared, then you get a negative 2x, and you get a negative x for a total of negative 3x, which is not what we want. We want a negative 2x. Oh, don't do that. I don't know what you're doing. What are you doing? Okay, so I'm going to get us back on track here. Um, we need to have these two parentheses be identical because we want it to be um, this parentheses squared. So what two numbers would go here that when we FOIL it out, we'd have a negative 2x? got to have the identical, the same numbers in these two parentheses. Right. So these are identical. They would add together to negative 2x. So when we multiply these together, what would be the constant that we would get? Well, it would be, it would be up here. We get a plus 1. So, why don't we clear that up? Um, okay, so that's plus 1, but altogether it needs to be as much as plus 5. So, if we just put plus 4 there. Okay. Did that whole thing make sense? Okay, good. So this much of it factors to x minus 1 times x minus 1, and we still have a plus 4 uh, here. Now it wants to be white, so I'm going to change it back to red. Plus 4. I'm going to try and come this way with it. So we have 
x minus 1 squared plus 4. And all of these should have dx as well. Now. All right. So, <laughs> um, Logan, why don't you show us, like, walk us through the u substitution for this pro this problem here. Justin just helped you out in a big way there. Yeah, good U is a you know a good choice, comes right out of the parentheses like we said before. And DU is luckily so nice, DX. Um, I'm gonna scroll down. So you're gonna see me writing down here at the bottom. Um, so what we have now is uh, actually and I'm not gonna put the limits of integration there, like I said. Uh, of DU over u squared plus 2 squared. It's helpful to write it as the number squared. Uh, and that will be, if we follow the, the pattern here, 1 over a, which is 1 over 2, times the arctangent of u, which is, by Logan's choice, x minus 1. It's a good choice. X minus 1 over A. Uh, and then we're going to actually plug in limits, so we don't really need the plus C. So we're going to take this from 1 to 3. We're going to plug those numbers in. So 1 half arc tangent. Uh, X minus 1 over. Uh, oh, I shouldn't have put X. I should have put 3. <laughs> Thank you. That's very nice. be able to go to the right very easily. You might want to come below. Good. Okay, now the question is, where do you find a tangent of 1? Uh, very good. Our tangent of 1 is pi over 4, and of course we still have this 1 half out here. So, pi over 8. <laughs> Always so positive. That was cool. That was cool working together.
So what's next? For those of you just listening to it, nothing happen on the video. Justin is encouraging us. We're such a good team. Okay. Um, so we need to take the integral of this thing here. Over one plus sine squared. Uh, someone fill in the limits of integration there. Oh yeah, Logan. I'm just I'm recording the. Uh, just the pointers and the and my audio. <laughs> On the inside. All right. Well, we got pi over two there, and a negative pi over two. Good. Negative pi over two to pi over two. We're gonna have to clear the field. There we go. That's good. Um, all right. So again, take a look on page 380. Or, yeah, 380. And we're looking around. We don't see any square roots in our function, so clearly number two would be the uh, the model to follow. Does it not look like number two to you? So it can. So, uh, yeah, let's just uh, think about it. Uh, it's It's got to be the derivative of a function over uh, a number squared plus a function squared. So what could we pick for u that would, when we take the derivative, give us something at least really close to uh, you know, 3 cosine x dx. Right, good. Sine of x uh, would be a good choice for u because when we take the derivative, it's the derivative of sine um, and you know what if we just went ahead and took this guy out outside the integral then that's exactly what we have we've got du over 1 plus u squared Actually, I'm going to take out the limits again because we're substituting u. We got du over 1 squared plus u squared. And so that's going to be 3 times. Uh, oh, are you jumping in there?
that is uh, all you're doing there is just going back from this du over 1 squared plus u squared back up to here but what we're doing is taking the antiderivative so the antiderivative if we look on page 380 is du or the antiderivative of du over 1 plus u squared would be this guy with arctangent in it so I'm sure we're going to get that out of there grab this guy too. Okay. So, I'm just going to take three times the antiderivative of this, which when we look on page 380, we see it's 1 over a, which isn't uh, anything spectacular, because a is just 1. So you got 1 over 1, uh, times the arctangent of u. u is the sine of x put some parentheses, uh, over a which is again 1 so <coughs> excuse me um, so now we've got this like dual thing in here with uh, the, the sine first and the arc tangent we'll have to straighten that out when we plug in these limits of integration so here we go 3 times the arctangent of the sine of our upper limit, which is pi over 2, minus 3 times the arctangent of negative, or the sine of negative pi over 2. arctangent of what's the sine of pi over 2? Yeah. It's 1 minus 3 times the arctangent of the sine of negative pi over 2. What's that? Now the question is, what angle has a tangent of 1? Remembering that when we ask that question, when we ask the arctangent question, we're again looking over here between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So whatever angle we choose needs to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So we've got now let me grab my pencil again. We got three pi over four minus three times negative pi over four, so it's plus three pi over four again. We have six pi over four or three pi over two. Justin's trademark. All right. Uh, we have another one. page 4. Yes. And page 5.
five. So page five is new. Okay. Just had to do something to make this the screen a little more room, so I could scroll and down and get more. All right. So twenty. find a tangent of 1. And that's what this will be. Anybody? Where do we find a tangent of 1? These are the angles that we're going to use if we're talking about the arc tangent. And we know that the tangent is the sine over the cosine. So, and we know it's, you know, obviously this is positive when we take the sine over the cosine. And so we're just going to look at all these angles in here. Uh, this one's definitely out. We already know that because we know that the tangent of pi over 4 is 1. So we don't need to mess with that. Um, here we have root 3 over 2 and 1 half is our cosine and sine. And this one will be uh, 1 half and root 3 3 over 2. So you just play around with these, take the sine over the cosine until we wind up getting root 3 over 3. Uh, and so my guess would be 1 half over root 3 over 2 multiply by the reciprocal cancel the twos, 1 over root 3, rationalize the denominator, which means multiply the denominator and the numerator both by root 3. So you get root 3 over root 3 times root 3 is 3. So 
What angle has an, a tangent of root 3 over 3? This one, pi over 6. So you have pi over 12 minus pi minus pi over 18. And so we need a common denominator there. So this would be 3 pi over 36. And this would be 2 pi over 36. And that would make pi over 36. Good. Happy face. Good. Uh, all right, so...